<sighs> so we've been doing the four stages of consciousness. And, you know, it's kind of funny because our last stage is called ASME, where it's all God. And the essence of ASME is that there's no state, there's no compartment, car, compart, where, you know, break things off. Com <laughs> Whoever said that, yes, compartmentalizations. So, um, <laughs> so it's a paradox, as we love to say. If it's not paradoxical, it's not true. So there, that it's all God, you can't separate it. And yet we separate it to understand more about where we are because we are in this human world of relativity. So the absolute has no compartments, has no differentiations, but here in the world of relativity, we experience it at different levels. So it's not, it's to live in both. So I'm going to do a review of the four stages. We're talking all about joy. Joy, joy, joy. And I put dance in there because really it's a dance between all of these stages. They're not just one stage. It's all of them happening all of the time. And we'll understand that more hopefully by the end of the talk today. What does that clock say? 925? <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 
uh, there's a lot of focus, there's a lot of concentration, and then when we surrender, we're moving down to our heart, we soften. The, the song that Jack, Jack just sang this morning is a, a, a stage three song. We're surrendering, I'm opening my heart, I give my life to you. I mean, I don't know if any of you, when, as he was singing, just felt your heart soften and open, and that's the beauty of stage three, is, is we start to open and feel something moving through us. And I spent the last two Sundays talking about that, so if you want to hear more, it's on the website. <laughs> then the last stage is called as me. And this is where there's no longer any separation. This is, it's a hard stage, well, I'll just go first in the easy part. So as me, anyone who's been in, I taught treatment to, you all know when we're doing treatments, as, it's God as me, love as me. It's not in, it's just, it's in me, but it's as me. There's no separation. There is no other. There is just just God. It's not God and, it's God. And we're not a part of God. This is a hard thing for us to get humanly. This is because we live in a relative world. We're not a part of God. All that God is, I am, I am all that God is. And we're not talking about my little ego, but the essence of who I am. We think that God is spread out over time and space, but that's because we're thinking humanly. Time and space is a human relative concoction. God transcends all time and space and is in through and as all time and space. So every moment in time and space contains the wholeness of God. So all the cosmos are inside of me. All the cosmos are inside of my atom. It's not like part of God is up in my head and part of God is in my foot. All that God is in every one of us. That's why St. Augustine said, I am, the cen- I am the center of the universe. I am the center of God's universe where there is no circumference. That every person is a center. You can't get this intellectually, linearly. You're mo- we're moving. This is why stages three and four, we're really moving into mysticism. We're really moving. See, this is where it gets paradoxical. It's all God. God is at stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. But we start experiencing it more at stage three and stage four. We start experiencing a depth that you can't, we can't just get there with our mind. We have to go to a deeper place within our spiritual self. To describe the non-dual is to say, because it, the, why we say non-duality duality is there's no separation. So it's really an experience of... It's a, so I want to... Exp- okay, the reason why, before I explain, I want to say this is how it's different than stage two. Because this is where it gets confusing. So I'm sort of stumbling over my words because... I'm trying to speak about very subtle things that are not easy, easily to talk about. Um, in New Thought, in Centers for Spiritual Living, it covers all three stages really well, <coughs> second, third, and fourth. We can do the asme, but there's a difference between knowing it conceptually to having a moment of it and, and residing there. So what a spiritual experience of asme feels like is everything is happening inside of me. That it's not, um, there's no separation. So, I don't know, if you're dreaming, there's, there's lucid dreams. Have, you all, have, have people had lucid dreams where you're in your dream and you sort of wake up inside your dream and you can change your dream, like you want this to happen? That's a lucid dream. That's a by-me dream. An as-me dream is where you're having the dream and the entire dream is happening inside of you, but you're not identified with any aspect of it. It's just arising. And when you're in that place, there's no striving. It's very similar to what Beth was reading in, uh, by Ajashante. And by the way, if you want to read some incredible non-dual writing, Ajashante is the guy. Um, it's all happening simultaneously, and everything is perfect as it is. At stage two, there's better and there's worse. I want health versus sickness. I want money versus not money. I want a good relationship versus a bad relationship. We're improving the world. We're improving our world. And that's a really, really important stage to go through. But at this asme stage, it's an acceptance of everything as it's arising. It doesn't say some things are good, some things are bad, and we sort of cut out the bad stuff. We accept all of it. And it's not, again, it's not a mental process. I mean, it can start there, but we start moving into a beingness. As Ajishante said, it's something we start to feel in our body. And just like any developmental stages, you don't get to skip stages. We, not you, me too. We don't get to skip stages. 
So we can't skip from stage two to stage four without stage three. We need to get into that surrender. And the why we need to get into the surrender is a lot what I was talking about last week. When I'm at stage two, I want my life to be good. And I am empowered to make my life good. And so I start creating that, and that's wonderful. In stage three, when I start surrendering, first it, we surrender and good things start to happen, but then the negative starts to arise. Because if we've given, the more we give our life to God, Ajay Shante says this too, is such a, um, it was another reading, maybe I'll use it next week. Um, total commitment to God. He said, there's no question. He says, it sneaks up on you. You think, well, I can just give a little bit of myself. <laughs> and, then, and then he says, but it starts to devour you. You have to end up giving more and more and more of yourself to this presence. And that's what stage three is about. The more we surrender, it's going to start bringing up all the ugly stuff. All the stuff at stage two you were done with. You, know, you, you were tired of feeling like a victim at stage one, so you're just done with that, only focusing on the good stuff. And it's like, no, you got to face the bad stuff. I, I, um, well, I was going to say that um, I just posted this past week, my uh, two pictures from when I was at Agape, when I first started on the Agape staff in my Agape practitioner training. And my memory of that time, especially the staff picture, which I loved the staff and they became family, but that particular picture was just soon after I joined. And I worked right, there was a wall there and I worked right behind there. I wasn't even going to come out for the picture. I mean, it was torture for me to talk to anybody. They're like, come on, you got to get the picture. No, I can't go. So they dragged me out. You're part of the staff. Now you're going to be in the picture. When I look at that practitioner picture, they told, the second, the, my, at the end of Prac 2, they were saying, okay, now we want the people who never talk in class to talk, and they pointed to me. <laughs> I mean, you only know me like this, but I never used to say a word. I was terrified to say even a word. So, what, so this is my point, and I'm, just, I'm using that because it's so obvious. It's such a clear example. That's why you, there's many, many examples, and I know we have them, where those things that we don't want to go to have to be raised up to be seen to, like, being pulled out of us, and I would never have done that if I hadn't been surrendered to do that. And it, I can't tell you how many stories I've read about Buddha, where someone who's very quiet can't wait to go, and this is when Buddha was alive, and go to learn from him, and he'd say, no, you have to go work out in the marketplace. And they're like, no, you're all about meditation. Nope, not for you. You're already still. Go out there and work in the marketplace. <laughs> you know, always. And, and uh, I hate, sometimes I, I stopped actually going to Wednesday night services at Agape because Reverend Michael started going out to the congregation and asking them questions. And Agape is full of very extroverted people. Who are like, he always went right by them into the person who's going like this. And he'd go right to you. <laughs> so I just didn't go because <laughs> I didn't know how to avoid that one. But, but teachers, spiritual teachers do that. They go towards your weaknesses sometimes. The things that you're afraid of, they go right towards it. Not out of love, but to say it's all God. And until we really know that it's all God, it's just a concept. Unconditional love is a concept if you only know that you're loved when you show up spiritual and happy and great. Uncon you don't really know what unconditional love is until you show up falling apart. Your life is falling apart. I have nothing left. And does, Am I still loved? Am I still seen? Am I not just loved out of pity, but am I still seen as a magnificent, whole, perfect being of God, even when I'm feeling small and ugly? That's how we start to learn it. And as, as we learn this through the surrendering process, see, there's, there's stages. It's not like you just go from stage two to stage three. Even stage two, as we want to create a better life, we're listening on how to do that. It's not just I create and I don't listen. I'm listening, so it includes stage three. And then as we're moving stage three to stage four, we're bringing up all this negative stuff to be healed to the point where we start to see everything as God. And we have those moments. And so I'm just going to um, share a quick moment because I've shared it a few weeks ago, but it was, I just, I, I didn't, when I put it in this context, I'm like, oh, that's what it was. I was riding my bicycle here. I, I don't always fall on my bicycle. <laughs> to church, and I loved it, and I was in such a um, great place, but as I'm writing, and, and some of you recognize the story, suddenly it was just, it felt like a descending, it wasn't a descending, but it felt like a descending, where suddenly I just realized, I don't even care if I'm spiritual, I just suddenly, everything was like, 
perfect just the way it was. I didn't need anything. I didn't want anything. I didn't, I was just like, it wasn't a not caring. It wasn't like a selling. It was just this joy. Like everything's just fine. And I felt so in my body. I'm fine. I'm good. And I came and I remember having the best time in Sunday service. I couldn't tell you if it was a good service or a bad service because I wasn't in that mindset. I was just in a like, life is great. I'm, everything was perfect. And I don't think And it lasted for like a week, and I'm writing my friend. I'm like, wow, this is just, I don't care if I'm spiritual. (laughs) It was so freeing because even though I didn't, I don't strive after money or whatever, I do strive after spirituality. That's a big striving for me to want to grow and to wake up and to be spiritual and to finally just to have those moments of just total letting that go. Like, I can let that go. The freedom, the joy, unbelievable. It was so extraordinary and it lasted for about a week and I'm not sure when my normal human mind came back but that's what the non-duality is that's the joy the absolute joy that is available to us in every moment but the reason why we miss it all the time is because we're thinking about the next thing we're thinking about what else I want what else I need to have and that's not necessarily bad that's what I'm saying all four stages are happening the whole this whole planet is running on karmic desire we 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 want things and that's what keeping, what's keeping us spinning. And evolution is happening. That keeps us going. It's great to find in the midst of that the non-duality. We can use it, like all of these stages all have their shadow side. So I think you know, the shadow side of stage two is um, we can, can ignore the negative stuff. The shadow side of stage three is becoming a little bit too passive. Um, and stage four is, is a, a can also be a spiritual bypass. Everything's God, so I don't need to do anything. I don't need to participate in life. It's always already good. So here's where I want to explain why this is going deeper. To be able to, I want to, what I'm saying right now about that experience coming on the bicycle, I'm talking about non-duality. But in this, right now, I'm still in my human self. When that happened, I was in that state. I was in that state of consciousness. The difference is, am I speaking from it or am I speaking about it? And that's the depth. It's easy to talk about four stages. It's easy to talk about oneness. It's easy to say everything's all God. It's easy to put all these great spiritual quotes on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, Instagram. It's easy to say all that stuff. And people are getting masterful at repeating some of the deepest, most profound truths. To become it is an entirely different story. It reminds me of when uh, Shunra Suzuki, and I, I wish I could remember what the actual phrase was, but he said some spiritual teaching, and his students said, oh, and he said it back to him. And Shunra Suzuki said, oh, that's not right. And the students said, well, wait a minute. You just said it. He said, well, yeah, when I said it, it was true. When you said it, it's false. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the point. I'm speaking about non-duality, about non-duality, but I'm not coming from duality. I'm, I get that I'm still in my relative. I'm not in that state right now. And to start becoming honest with ourselves, the reason why we learn these four states of consciousness is not... First of all, I wrote a quick little blog yesterday. We don't, there's no end. When you learn four stages, you're like, oh, at fourth stage, I'm done. You know, like there's an arrival point. There's no arrival point. There's no, like, you get there and you're complete. All of these four things are happening, and we want to become masters of all four of them, not just one of them, all four of them. So I have a friend who, uh, Zen Buddhism, Shunra Suzuki, is a perfect example of non-dualism. The joy and his lightness of being, he accepts everything as it arises. He doesn't stress. He doesn't grasp. He, he was in Zen since he was 11 years old. By the time he came here, he had mastered it. And anytime, if you read it, you just feel the joy coming from him. I have a colleague who was a monk in the Zen Center, the Zen Center that Shunra Suzuki uh, started or continued. Uh, He was a monk there for 15 years. And then he found Science of Mind, and Science of Mind was such a relief to him because all the acceptance was great, but he also was still human. And he had no way to deal with all this human stuff. And that's where you, you need stage two. You need to say, you know what? I do want to excel. Okay, I'm accepting everything that's arising, and I'm human, and I still want to have whatever. I want to create this, or I want to create that. And so it's, what we're trying to do is not to get to stage four and say, I'm done. The, the, the shadow side of stage four, the non-duality, um, I, there's a lot of people in the integral movement who love non-dual, and my sense is it's like, um, almost like an elitism because now I've reached the highest stage. I don't see any separation. A, I don't feel like they're really coming from that other than conceptually, but also it's like better than. 
if you're in a place of better than, you're not there. <laughs> because there is no better than. That's relative. I'm more evolved. I'm at stage four and you're at stage two. Then you know you're, not, you're out of that place. It's mastery of all four stages of being able to surrender, of knowing when to speak your truth, of when to heal, of when to allow, when to allow the presence. And that's a mastery that's going to take us many lifetimes to have. I think of someone like... We don't know really what Jesus did or didn't do in terms of miracles. But he certainly, I don't think, cured everybody. He cured some people. There was something in him that said this was the time to cure. But he didn't do it for everybody. And he certainly didn't do it for himself. And not only did he not save himself, although in Matthew it says he had legions of angels to help him, he got tortured and killed in a most brutal way. He didn't help himself at all. And yet he had, apparently, this ability, stage two ability, to cure. Why didn't he use it? I think of Paramahansa Yogananda. He is known, for, he cured a lot of people when he was here. And he had, um, Roy Eugene Davis tells a story, they're walking down the hallway, and he, he, uh, Roy Eugene Davis, ever since he was a kid, had a problem in his shoulder, but he was just told it was going to be there for life, so he never talked about it and just wa- accepted it accepted it. And he was walking down the hall with Yogananda, and Yogananda just stopped. He said, you have a problem in your shoulder. And he goes, yeah. Yogananda put his hand on his shoulder. Pain left, never came back. He could cure like that. He talked about his practices, about how they lead to long life. If you do this, you're going to start knowing your energy and your body, and you're going to be able to prolong life into your 80s, into your 90s. Yogananda died in his 50s. He had the ability to cure. He was using techniques that many Hindu masters lived into their 80s and 90s, which before nutrition was a long time, before medicine. And yet he died in his 50s. There's so much we don't understand. And the problem sometimes when we only learn about the law of attraction, we miss that. There's a lack of complexity of how this world works. Yogananda actually chose to stop curing people who were not serious about the path. When he first came here, he would do it because he thought that would inspire people to learn about God, to want to wake up to God. And what he found was is that people were just happy with the cure and then would go back to their life. And he said, that's not the purpose of the cure. The cure is to get you interested in God. The cure is not why we're here. We're not here just to manifest the things that we want. That's the limitation. We are here to wake up to a joy beyond what we can even What I can even imagine now, I can talk about those experiences when I was in an expanded state and enjoy just as things are. But to live and sustain that joy, that's what we're here to do. And then from that place, we know when to pray for people. We know when to, when, I'm I'm sure you all as prayers know that there's times when you're praying for someone and you know that you know that you know. It's done, like it's done. And then other people, you're praying and you're like, eh, it might be done. I don't know. I don't feel it. Everyone's not the same. It's not like we're just one big, simplistic, mechanical machine and you just put the same prayer in for every single person and we all respond equally. We're all completely different, completely different. And that's the richness of this world. That's the beauty of this world is that we are all completely different. So the same prayer isn't going to work with everybody. I remember really working on this at the psych hospital. I was in prac training and doing different, same prayers for different people and they would respond so completely different. And I was trying to figure out why. Why I could, there was one person who had an instant spontaneous healing and another person I do the same prayer for and then nothing. And I saw this deep process. And I remember Jeffrey Mishlov, who was a psi researcher at Duke. He's this, um, telepath, he's, he uh, researched telepathy and <laughs> kinesiology. Anyways, he was saying he liked our teaching. He just didn't believe in the absolute of it. He didn't believe that it's always this way. We say always. He said, it's not a law like electricity. There's so many more things at play here, and that, that, that's not bad. That's good. Anyone who starts, tra- the more we travel on it, the joy of the complexity of all of us as humans, that's where we get to the surrender. There are so many things we don't know, and it opens our heart to say, I don't know. I am here to be used, and I will pray always from the highest place that I can pray from, but I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt what those results are going to be. And I would be lying to myself if I said I did. And I don't think any person who cures, you know, and, and that becomes, that always is what, what is, I think, a limitation of new thought. Joel Goldsmith, 
healed so many people, cured. I won't talk about the difference between cure and hero, but he cured so many people. And when he had a heart attack, he went off to Hawaii to hide because he thought, well, people aren't going to believe this works. You don't see the shadow side. You don't see the people hid the things when it didn't work. We, only, we, we highlight this work, this work, this work, and we pretend that didn't work. This extraordinary spiritual journey, what the joy of, is of as me, is to start saying, it's all God, even if I don't get the results that I want. Even if someone is say, showing up in a way that I can't even imagine, God is there. And to get to that place of joy, Kristen Tippett, and when I got to the end of her book, she was talking about how much more joy and playfulness that she felt. And she said she expects adversity. All the people she's interviewed, they're all dealing with all aspects of life. They give so much. They're making such big changes in the world. And that actually brought her joy because her heart was open to all of it. When she only wanted good things and was holding on to good things, it, it clenched her. But when she opened her heart to all of it, it made her lighter and freer as a human being. And she talked about one of the people, she talked about many people, obviously. But at the very end of her book, there was a woman who uh, worked with Doctors Beyond Borders. And, worked in, and just he'd given her life as a doctor to all these different third world countries. Extraordinary. Just felt her life was about service. She was in Syria. And she got captured by ISIS. And when she, she got to write a letter from when she, she was in captivity for 18 months and was ultimately killed. In this letter, she wrote to her parents, I never knew I could know so much joy that I know that even in prison, even when I'm locked up, there is a presence that is greater than all of this, and I'm one with it. And it wasn't, that wasn't concept. There was something so deep in her. We wait till we have the right circumstances. That's what Ajishante was pointing to in the reading. We think, well, when I need to have this happen, or I need to, st- we think the striving, and when we get that thing, then I can have the joy, the peace, the harmony. It's now. You don't have to wait for anything. We don't have to wait for anything. That's the non-dual reality, as me. It's right now. And the only thing stopping us is us. God is at all four stages. What these four stages are about is our own limitation to receive the infinite goodness of God. It is right now. All the joy that has ever been and ever will be is not limited by any condition or circumstance in our life. It is available to us right now. And we get to dance in that joy. Let's dance in prayer. And as I just stand before this microphone, I'm fully present to everyone in this room. I don't need to go anywhere. I can just be fully in this moment, right here and right now. There's nowhere else to be. Any part of me that feels I wish I was someplace else or can't wait to get someplace else or fears being someplace else, See if we can just let that go for just this moment of prayer and just be present now to whatever he is here. That whatever is arising is just as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be anything different than it is right now. The divine, infinite, and eternal one is always already in its wholeness and its perfection, its beauty, its harmony, its joy, its peace, its love, its abundance, its power right now. There will be no more God in the future than there is right now. There, will, there is, was never more God in the past than there is right now. <coughs> it is all within all of us right now. Not just a part of God. All that God is. All that God is, is in, within, and as us now. We do not need to change anything. We do not need to fix anything. We just breathe into the perfection of now, that which is underneath the surface of our thoughts, our emotions, our grasping and our striving, our resisting, underneath all of it, this one life. It is always at peace. 
It is always love. It is always bliss. It is all of us. It does not prefer some people over another. It is all of us. It is all of us in this room. It is all of us on this planet. It is all the cosmos, all time and space, all dimensions, and beyond all time and space, beyond all dimensions, beyond all rel relativity, beyond all phenomena. It is what it is what it is, and closer to us than our very breath. This is all that we need to know. It is from this place that the perfection of each moment arises moment to moment, and we have the heart to see, to feel, the presence to witness, the joy to simply ground ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, soulfully, and the perfection of who we are now with all our dark and with all our light, with all our conditions just as they are now, conditions that we may call bad and conditions that we may call good, with all the relationships, relationships that we may call bad and relationships that we might, may call good, with our financial life, finances that we may call bad and finances that we call good. It is all perfect right now. The peace that passes all human understanding right now. The wholeness. We are all whole. Nothing is missing. Nothing is lacking. Whole. Every one of us whole just as we are right now. Nothing needs to be fixed, just as we are right now. Nothing needs to be fixed. Nothing needs to be fixed. Nothing needs to be fixed. We are whole, perfect, and complete in all our imperfection, even now. This is the word of God, and it is already done. And I invite us all to say together, and so it is. Amen. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. So it is.